This is Official Nerd Business. Hello, nerd boys and girls, welcome back to another video on Prime Mover. As I said, we are uh, starting on the puzzles that really uh, make you think. So let's put on our thinking caps and look at Endgate. This, uh, this sounds very computery, of course. Let's see what the description if if both A and B are plus one. Send a one to C. If not, send zero to C. So if we get a one here and a one there, we want a one here. And if either one of these shows us a zero, then we need to put in a zero here. All right. Let's see. First thing. I think we need to limit our throughput a bit because these are going to run together through some sort of circuit and we want to delay them I guess until one of them has cleared because we need a couple of checks to see if the one is one or if the other is, is one or zero specifically Let's, yeah, we can build them in later. Let's first do the lo let's first do the logic. So if a is a zero, we need to send a zero to C, and we already have a zero. So at that point, we don't really care what value B has, right? So we need a way to. B and whenever we let B pass it would need to reset the switch and this delete instruction if it is a zero Then we want that zero out, and that zero to tell this, uh, excuse me, this switch to destroy it. Um, let's, let's also this for releasing a number. Oh, it's not gonna fit. This should work slightly better because now we can put a lock here and a destroy there. Okay, so our number comes up here, and then it's tested for. Uh, Either it's it's a one, then we want to think about it a little bit later. And if it's a zero, it's sent to the output because once we have a zero from A, we no longer care what B is because there are never going to be one both. So this zero is good enough to output, and this duplicate just. Um, retrieves the next value for uh, B here so that we know we're testing them at the same time. But this is very busy, yeah, we need to, we need to constrain input. Um, do that with an open lock and a button to unlock it. Here. Now we can come a little closer to here, I guess. Then have the delete instruction behind us here, and whenever no that whenever we send an uh, output, use that output to unlock the next input. We can probably shorten this a bit later on. For now, let's see what happens. This works as expected, and now we have two ones to deal with. 
let's see how can we test if a is a one because we're we're certain that a is a one and we have an input on b here if a was zero we would have destroyed b we can probably show that mm, let's let's not think it too much with it if a is one and B is one we want to send out that one and if B is zero we need to we're gonna zero wait a second wait a is it really that easy we can destroy A because no matter what if A is a one the output is either one or zero depending on B being one or zero Here we have our output line. Yes, we can shorten this. Is that it? So the numbers are locked here. One is left true because it is not being destroyed because this was one. And this one unlocks the next zero. This is a zero, so whatever is on B is going to be destroyed. Yes, so we're going to send this zero out. And we're going to tell this one to destroy itself. Now this is a one. So we just want to see what B holds, and that's a zero. And it's zero as expected. Yes! We seem to have an end gate. Oh, there's one very slight thing we can do to speed this up. Uh, this can be on the front inside of on the side of the button. Like so, and then destroy it over here. It's only a very slight improvement, but something that we do do a lot, so it adds up. Alright! So there we have the AND gate. Let's see if we can work this one out. Set the sum of A and C to B. A and C are always positive. That's that's particularly nice. So we have an input on A, we have an input on C, and we need to add those together. And send them to B, so I guess we are going to use the same constriction. Let's just put that in place. We're gonna have an output here, and when it hits this output, we're gonna me, duplicate this and destroy it. This is gonna change a little later on, I guess, when we uh, when we know where the machine itself will will be, and you will copy it, I guess. Just punch this button to unlock. This guy. And we are on. Yes, we will only have two numbers in our machine. And we need to add 3 to 2 and send a 5 to B. Now we only have these plus 1 and minus 1 instructions. So we need a. Clock here, I guess. That keeps this in the loop and keeps adding to it. Until this button is 
pressed. And this button is pressed on the upper input. I think I need a little bit more space here. When this input becomes a zero, because then this is gone through the clock. That often. Okay, we will probably come out here. This again might change in a minute because we have to build the clock up here. Back here. Or back there. Let's let's see what happens. We, we always get a positive number, so oh hang on. I think I need a is a bit of an issue here. Space is a bit of an issue. Uh, we can do this. No, we can't. We need to do this, I guess. And then... We check to see if this is zero. And if this, we need to set it out. And if it isn't, we need to go through this loop again. Um, in that case, this is positive. It's looking a bit long. So by subtracting one from a clock variable and keeping uh, adding that same one to whatever number is down below here, we effectively reduce this number uh, and add it piece by piece to this number until we have an output but this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 instructions long and this is only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 I think I don't know if the switch counts double no, it's only 6 so I can make it oh, uh, now it's seven. Okay. Is this sufficient? Whenever a number goes through the switch, the switch is toggled and we um, want to reset it. And this is one too slow. That is also slightly too slow, too slow. Now we are, uh, we need more space. So we need to move this back a little bit. And general principle is okay. This line a little bit more. Can we build this in such a way? Magic happens back here. This entire loop to be behind it, and we could do with a bit of delay here for the first run. This needs to be there. 
This one's alright. And now we need to build the look behind here. Um, this is still one too close. But if you extend it, then the travel time here becomes too long. Yep. Logistics is hard on this one. I'll just have to do this. this a little bit of an edge and now one two three four five six seven ten one two three four five six six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight and then this is in fact right the, the, the clock variable was here very quickly it seemed but I think it'll work out just fine And there's our block. Let's move this over by one. It's really just shaving off some cycles, but we're gonna keep an eye on whether or not this works out, whether or not they hit the um I think it does though. Ooh, sneaky. Ooh, sneaky. That would mean we get to do this. This is the three, right. Now it's just very slightly too late. But I fixed that by moving you. is faster and I think we should still this is gonna spill some cycles later on why did you get ahead of I think we should do this now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Both clocks at eight. This 
was in fact Yes. This seems to work out all the times. Yes. If those bigger sums work out then uh, then you can see that the uh, the cycles on both clocks are, are in sync. So that's nice. And there we have add. We can now do basic arithmetic. Alright, um that's it for now. In our next video we will be looking at modulo and reverse. Reverse is a very interesting puzzle. See you next time. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.